seat up here toward the cemetery to show her what uh, goes on here. And it's now my pleasure. Please welcome Vice Admiral Nora Tyson. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ed, for that very kind introduction, and a huge thanks to you and to the American Veterans Memorial Association for putting on this extraordinary event for the last 78 years. This is incredible. I was honored by the invitation, had no idea, and I am so incredibly honored to be here and to be a part of this service today. I am blown away by the crowd here today. The ceremony, I would like to thank all of the dignitaries who are here today for being a part of this ceremony, and all of the distinguished guests from the city, from the state, from the county, and from our country. All of you who have served in one way or another, this is a great community. It's important that we take today, we take the time to recognize our fallen American heroes, both the individuals who made the ultimate sacrifice and the families who served alongside them and supported them. To those of you who have lost friends and family in combat and are here today, I thank you for preserving their memory and for honoring their service. Memorial Day is among our country's oldest and most treasured traditions. This day was originally called Decoration Day. It officially began in 1868 and served as an occasion for relatives and grateful citizens to adorn the graves of those who died during the Civil War. But in the years that followed, all Americans began to observe the day and were brought together again in their shared desire to honor the heroes who had died in service to our country. Organizations like the American Veterans Memorial Association are a proud part of that tradition. Every year since 1939, this extraordinary organization has hosted this event and ensured that we pause to remember to reflect and to respect those who gave their lives for our country and for our freedom. Today we are honoring more than 1.1 million men and women who have made that sacrifice in service to our nation. Each of those brave Americans served a common cause and shared an unwavering commitment and desire to be part of something greater than themselves. That commitment to something greater is present here today in this unifying and humbling tradition. Together we honor these men and women and their families and celebrate their legacy. There are many veterans and current service members here with us as well. And I'd like to thank you and your families for your continued dedication and support of our nation and the men and women who serve today. Today I was asked to speak a little bit about women in the service. As I look back over my 37 years in the Navy, I've watched the face of our force and our community of veterans grow and change in the most wonderful ways. We are a more diverse force than ever before, and that's a good thing. Our military has proven that diversity makes us stronger. It increases our capability. It's our diversity of thought, built from our different backgrounds and experiences, our different ways of thinking, of viewing problems, which allows us to view challenges from new angles and find new solutions. I'm proud to have been the first woman to command a carrier strike group, the George H.W. Bush strike group, and to have had the opportunity to take her on her first deployment, and I'm proud to be the first woman to command a numbered fleet, 
to follow in the footsteps of Admiral Bull Halsey as the commander of U.S. Third Fleet. But I'm even more proud to be a part of a Navy where those milestones are now behind us. Women serve in every branch of the armed forces today. And as Secretary of Defense Ash Carter announced recently, the military is now beginning integration into the last occupations formerly close to women. Soon we will see women serving in the infantry and special operations forces. <laughs> women are in command of ships, squadrons, strike groups, and more all across our Navy and all of our armed forces today because they're qualified and proven commanders and female sailors are serving in roles of increasing responsibility because their performance warrants it. And that's how it should work. Our most critical jobs should be filled by our most capable leaders, plain and simple. Today, if you can meet the standards, then you will have the opportunity. When it comes to women in service, I can tell you with great confidence that the more than 350,000 women serving as part of our active duty guard and reserve force today are on a great path and have opportunities that their predecessors never had. As confident as I am about the future of our force, I'm concerned about the most recent generation of veterans. Unemployment numbers for post 9-11 vets are well above the national average and even more so for our 2.2 million female veterans. We need to work to solve this problem together. We need the help of the talented members of this community and other communities to do it together. There are many organizations today focusing on the problem and working to make the transition from military to civilian life as seamless as possible. I know many of you have made that transition yourselves and can help this younger generation. Another factor which makes this challenge at home is that more than anywhere else in the country, post 9-11 veterans are coming here to Southern California. And I'm actually encouraged by that because so many of the business leaders here are already hiring veterans and understand fully the unique and valuable contributions that veterans can make when employed by our local businesses. Howard Schultz, Starbucks CEO, co-authored a book called For Love of Country, What Our Veterans Can Teach Us About Citizenship, Heroism, and Sacrifice. In his book, Mr. Schultz points out many of the positive attributes of veterans that correlate directly with the business world and how vets can help make companies stronger. But he also said that he was blown away when a young veteran told him that he had more anxiety going to a job interview than he had going back to Afghanistan. I know that's hard to imagine, but the statistics tell us that it's true. We know that the task before us is difficult, but together we can make a difference. It's through the continued work of federal, civic, and corporate organizations and communities like this one today that we will combat this problem. We're blessed to have brave men and women willing to go into harm's way to keep our country safe. Like you are doing here today, we need to ensure they know that their service will never be forgotten. I'm proud to be here with you to remember our nation's fallen warriors. Perhaps the greatest way to honor those we have lost is to help take care of those who have survived. I want to thank each and every one of you for everything you do to honor our nation's heroes. This event is an extraordinary tribute, and I cannot tell you how proud I am to be a part of it. May God bless each of our brothers and sisters in arms who made the ultimate sacrifice to keep America free. 
May God bless each of you who make this important day possible. And may God bless this great country that we are all so proud to serve. Thank you.